Welcome to Apex Live. We're here to have a conversation with three amazing women on the occasion of Women's Day. Yes. Can women really have it all? Yeah, it depends what having it all means. I think each individual has a certain goal that they want to reach and an understanding of what means all. Each one will mm. definitely be different. But it's reaching your goals. But I think as human beings, we're always uh, maybe looking for how far we can push ourselves. So we might reach our goal because I think in any business world you always have tasks and lists that you are ticking off, but it never ends. So your goals really keeps going higher and higher and higher and every year, you know, for the past eight years, for example, it just continues the list. So having it all, it's that fulfillment that you feel within yourself. Right. Luaya, you recently, your restaurant recently won the award at Oman Restaurant Awards. Yeah. So at that particular point, did you feel that, again, going back to the question of can women really have it all, like, did you feel a sense of fulfillment in terms of being a mom, uh, being a wife, balancing a home, setting up a restaurant, and being successful at the same time? Um, I did. The, the award was kind of like a validation for me that okay you are recognized for your hard work so it was a good validation but then I have to say it was not easy to balance it all I had a village right. supporting me you know I had my husband I had my parents I had my staff um, I couldn't have done it all on my own because um, there's always a part of me when I'm at work that's feeling guilty and there's always a part of me when I'm with the kids or having so much fun with the family that's thinking oh there's work uh, that needs to be done. I think the key is to understand that you can't get it, have it all, all the time. There are times when you're going to be at work and giving your best, and there are going to be times when you're going to be with your family, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Talking yeah. about family, I think Jannat, you will be able to answer this uh, with more expertise because you're in the family business. So, does the dynamic of you balancing work, personal and professional, uh, when it comes to a family business, how does that apply? Like, how do you Bring see the that? kids to work? <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, yeah, we oh, you need to have, you need to find the balance, you know. And um, as you said, it's a family business, so our kids are used to it. You know, they're used to us being, you know, at home but working, or on holiday but working. You know, it just goes on continuously. There is no holiday. You know, there is always work carried on, you know, they we're always on a call, we're always on an email. Um, but even when we're, you know, in the country uh, and the kids are with us, we take them. You know, if we're, we have a new restaurant that we're building, the kids are in it. If we have some training to be taking, you know, the kids are doing it with us. From the day they're born until, you know, until today, they've always been involved completely. And they know everything about it. And it's so funny because, like, our little girl, even when she does her uh, pretend play with the Barbies, She's got a bakery, and you know she's <laughs> not right this <laughs> You can see it's her so, you know? yeah. Yeah. And uh, our yeah. son is always already designing, you know, this new restaurant that's gonna have this water tank in it, and this, mm. you know, so they're already it's in their blood. They've, they've always been. They've involved. already been groomed for yeah. a takeover. <laughs> the next exactly. generation yeah. has been so designed and definitely involved in everything. Yeah. yeah. Right, Maha. What about you? You have teenagers. How, the struggle has been real for you from being a working mom and your journey has been quite a hard one. It has been, it has seen its ups and downs and you've yes. made it, you know. So when it comes to children, personal sacrifices, like what do you have to say about that? I think because I started very late in my uh, journey in business, both my kids were in university. So after they came back, the struggle was those years that they were away and I'm establishing my business, I had, I had freedom as a single mom. I was, I was constantly, my new babies were my companies. Once they came in, then I had to find the balance to spend time with them and to take care of my work. But before, like Janat said, you know, you're constantly on emails. It could be 12, it could be one. You're thinking of something, you're just constantly uh, working when it's your own business there's there's no holiday you're constantly so the balance I had to find the challenge was when the kids came back 
into Amman, then to see, okay, now I need to kind of uh, make the time for them as well and not just my businesses. Right. Luaya, what about you? Like, you know, with your babies and just setting up something new and I think it all happened around the same time. Yeah. So how was the experience for you? Did you have a moment when you just wanted to shut off and just run away to some remote oh, island? Yes. I had moments, a lot of moments like that when I was like telling my husband, you know what, enough, I don't want to do it, it's too much, you know. But, um, you know, you have to get over these moments, right. yeah. And. Uh, it becomes worthwhile right. after you've done it. Right. Yeah. So it's okay. It's okay to yeah. have a complete meltdown. You don't have to have it together all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And it's resilient. Sure. You yeah. have to just come back and Otherwise, say. it won't even be that amazing. You know, you right. won't even get the pleasure. Right. Yeah. So it, it just adds to the memories, like yes. children and work and all yeah. these things. Yeah. Yeah. Do women have to work twice as hard to establish themselves, especially within the framework of this society? I do think women need to work twice as hard. Um, because being a mother is a huge role and then at the same time running a business is equally huge you know so to first of all balance that you know I mean when I compare my job to my husband's he has a bigger role in the company you know being a managing director but I always feel more stressed out because I'm trying to balance the kids and work you know at the same time and here he is throwing more responsibilities at me and I'm like, hello, choose, kids, work, which one do you want? You know, I can't do both. But in the end, I do because um, I, I have to, you know, this is what I love doing. I love being a mother and I love my job, you know, I love our business. So in the end, yes, I do feel that I need to work twice as hard. I end up sleeping much later because I'm trying to spend, you know, the afternoons with the kids and then I'll catch up on the work in the evenings. Um, and then he has to, you know, you still have to wake up you know, as early um, to, you know, start the day and, you know, start the kids off and then, you know, work at the same time. But I think it's also really important that the kids see us, you know, um, managing this well because they grow up to become similar, you know, to what we are. They and at, the, at the moment, our 13 year old is starting his own company, mm -hmm. you know, so he's and I always tell him, you know, you need to learn how to balance your schoolwork because it's still so important with your own brand, you know, and I think it's everything that he's seen us do and how we balance it that he's going to be able to do that, you know, so uh, yes, it's I definitely it. think right. that women work twice as hard. But I agree with what you said, like um, when I started my business, I, I, it was chaotic, you know, balancing everything. At night, I would just want to unwind. Uh, like in the summer it was crazy because we had issues, technical issues with the building and then my kids, I, I wanted to spend the holiday with them um, but I reached a, a point where I decided, you know what, Luaya, it's okay to delegate you know, it's okay to, okay I trust the operations manager, he'll take care of it, I trust marketing, I took care of it because I enjoy it so much, it's, it doesn't take that much of a toll to me but the minute I realized, okay I can delegate to my family, my my, my husband, my uh, staff, that's when I felt I got it all, you know? Mm -hmm. So, at the beginning, yes, my mentality was, yes, we, I, work, I have to work hard, I have to work twice as hard. Now I realize, no, I don't have to. Um, I can relax and things will get done. I agree with both ladies here that it's, women have to work twice as hard um, in the sense of, not just managing your family, but in the work environment that we're in. For men, it's very easy because there's something called networking. Networking mm -hmm. is very important in yes. business. And for men here, because of our culture, mm -hmm. it's easier for them, let's go and have dinner together, let's go and have lunch, and you know. For us, in our culture, it's very difficult for me to, if it's a, a woman entrepreneur, I can. I can make, like today I've met amazing uh, ladies here and hopefully we'll keep in touch and maybe we'll collaborate through our businesses yeah. and you know we'll exchange numbers and we can meet. But the majority of businesses out there, depending on what businesses, for example I'm in tourism and mm -hmm. I'm in, you know, in hospitality and all this, the majority are male dominated businesses. Yes. So for me to get that networking is very difficult and I find that's where I have to look for the balance. How am I gonna do it? So it's constantly 
leaving your job while you need to sit on your desk and work and work, but you need to go during working hours and knocking on doors and getting those opportunities that you need to market yourself. You need the business to be, to be going. So I find that is where I work twice as hard than I would say a male for me to, to manage all my businesses. So has anyone of you have ever felt the need to maintain a stronger personality outside? You know, does it require you coming out of your shell and uh, putting up a front that has to be strong and gripping and, you know, powerful in certain circumstances? I, I definitely think so because when you're um, leading a whole company or a whole team behind you, if you are too shy or too... Um, hidden away, you know, and not as strong and not facing the world, then everybody else is going to be the same, you know, they're not going to be as confident. So I think it's always important that you lead with um, a personality that is an example to them, you know, mm -hmm. so that, I mean, I strongly believe whatever you see from staff in a restaurant, in a cafe, you know that they've been trained in a, trained in a certain way, you know? Yeah. So it's important to have that confidence and, you know, um, and also to pass it on to them. So, of course, yeah, it's definitely something... Uh, yeah. I mean, you, ha you have to have boundaries um, if you're talking about in-house and staff. And as well with people outside, you have to come across, number one, like Janet said, confidence. Mm -hmm. As a woman, you have to be confident. I think the most important in you know maintaining a different personality other than yourself is you learn quickly. From the beginning, it was you wait, you go, you give a proposal, you wait a day, a two, a week, and you try to call, and you have all that that personal feeling of I shouldn't disturb them because I really want the job. And then suddenly you, it becomes a shift. You realize really quickly, I'm wasting my time. And as they say, money is time. And then you take a different approach. You know, you feel bad because you're putting this mask that really isn't you, but you have to in the business. And you find yourself saying, right, this is the proposal. Do you like it? I give you until tomorrow or 11 o'clock. Please give me an answer. If I don't hear from you, I'll understand it's a no. Yeah. And you move on to the next thing. So these are the kind of changes that really you truly have to change when you're dealing in business. It's being tough, kind of. Right. Yeah. What about what do you have to say about that, Luaya? Because you know your yeah. business, you, your restaurant is you've just started out. Like yeah. you know, it's been a couple of years, and for you, these are qualities. Like she said, yeah. she had to learn through a long journey, mm. and so has Jannat. You know, they've been yeah. in the market for such a long time. Do you face this? I think Janet and Maha said it very well. Um, yeah, I faced the same thing. I started off saying I want to create a brand where everyone's happy, everyone's fulfilled. But then I realized it's not realistic. You have to be tough. You right. have to... Okay, you want to make everyone happy, you have to be fair. Right. But everyone is accountable too. Right. Yeah. Within So within the paradigm of Omani culture, you know, they're not used to... The, they're not used to having tough women or they're not used to... Um, for, for that instance, you know, having women as entrepreneurs within the society. So do you think in a way uh, you guys have changed the game as entrepreneurs? Like, you know, and more and more women coming up as well. Does it change the game out here? I think, I, I think today was the first uh, day really to sit and talk to Lei. I've seen her before, but today was the first time we had a conversation. She surprised me by saying, you know, Maha, we look up to you, you know, uh, in the business. And, yeah. right. and I was, and the reason she said that was because I was telling her, I don't feel I have fulfilled or reached my target yet. Right. So it was very, um, very interesting to hear you say that, and I appreciate it. <laughs> But it's, um, it's, it's a constant thing that we are trying to reach our goals and right. trying to reach those... Uh, but that those does set up, uh, say, a source of inspiration for other women. Mm. Like, you've been here for a long time. Maybe you've been here as well. Yeah. And, you know, like, mm. you will be training the next generation of women and girls in the society to come up. Mm. And don't you think that that itself is like a, 
responsibility towards the society when you as yeah. entrepreneurs take I think up this? Vinny, from, from my side, from my point of view, is I find doing mentorship is very important. You need mm -hmm. to give back to the society. So this community services that we do, either we talk about or we do like events and charities or we do one-to-one. Uh, -one. But it's very important to bring in, uh, like for example, there's an Omani photographer. She was like, it's not working when I go and I try in the weddings and, and people, you know, they cover up and they don't want me to go and print out the pictures and men will see us without the scar. All right, so what can we do? Then we sit and we discuss them. Well, how about we have a printer at home and how about we start like that? And do you know, so mentorship is very important. I think everybody who's, especially us women, because it's a new thing, like you said in Oman, um, a new thing in the new world. Not before our parents all worked and our mothers worked, yeah. if it's been in the fields, on the farms or right. whatever. So we cannot say we are the first generation right. to work. No, absolutely not. But in, in this day and age, it's very important to bring in other younger women to help them, um, you know, fulfill their dreams in the right. business world. Yeah. Jana, do you see more and more younger generation of Omani women or say even expat women uh, you know, rising up to the occasion? Are they seizing the opportunity today? Yes, I do. And I think it's, a, like you said, it's a responsibility for us to lead in the right way, you right. know, uh, to lead with the right examples and, you know, to mentor them in the right way so that they have the confidence to do that. Um, but I must say that I think Oman is very advanced in this kind of thing. You know, women have for a very, I mean, I've been here for 15 years, but I've always known that Armani women are very strong and empowered, or, you know, uh, His Majesty has always looked yes, at that in a huge a lot of way, you know, yes. and the support has always been there. So I think women in Armani have that advantage, you know, mm -hmm. that they have the support, whether it's from the government or, you know, from the people. Uh, it's definitely something that is huge in Oman and getting bigger and bigger. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, they're not only fantastic bosses, but also amazing human beings. And definitely, if I'm ever going to get the excuse of sleeping in late, <laughs> I will be working for them. <laughs>